Alright, well in this video I'm going to show you how to uh, connect an older GM 4-speed manual transmission to a newer style LS series engine 4.8, 5.3, 6 liter, 5.7, you know, LS1, 2, 3, etc. What I have here is a 5.3 liter out of a truck, um, 2002 Chevy Silverado 5.3 liter. It's got an LS1 intake manifold. It's going in my 1955 Chevy, but the transmission I have is a Borg Warner T10, 10 spline input shaft. And you're wondering, how do you uh, connect that to a newer style LS engine you want to install in your 55 Chevy? Well, here's the way. What you do is, from 99 to 2006, Chevy used this flywheel on their 4.8 liter Chevy trucks with a 5-speed manual. And it has the same bolt pattern in the back as an old school pressure plate, which you can buy for pretty much any old car, GM car. It has that same bolt pattern, and here's your 10 spline clutch disc. Got all this stuff at my local, locally here in Anchorage, Alaska, at the parts stores. A clutch disc and pressure plate are from Flat Fats, Federated Auto Parts. Um, Times with the clutch alignment tool and the throw out bearing as well. Then, for a pilot bearing, I've, what you need is the LS7 or LS2 pilot bearing. For pretty much, uh, you can pretty much look that up on the Shucks O'Reilly's Auto Part website on which bearing you need. Um, I'm using a truck style bell housing. Um, it's from like a 63 to 66 Chevy truck. My transmission needs to be cleaned up. It's back here. But, um, yeah, I'll show you guys how to do it. List out the part numbers in the uh, YouTube side page there, and you can check that out. Well, as you can see there, I had the uh, flywheel bolted to the engine already. Um, one thing you will need to do is, for some reason, this um, pressure plate here. Some of the bolt holes will not fit these new style metric bolts through them. They're, they're, the hole size is too small. You just need to use a drill bit in a large amount, just a tiny bit. They almost fit, but not quite. Um, make sure to buy new metric bolts as the flywheel is a metric flywheel specifically for the LS engine. So I went to my bolt store and bought grade 8 bolts. Well, as you can see here, I've got the uh, bell housing slid onto the dowel pins of the LS motor. Pops right on there, fits perfectly. The only thing you won't be able to use is this bolt hole right here, but that's common on all S motors. Do not have that bolt drilled or tapped, but you can use all your other remaining bolts with no problems whatsoever. Uh, this is here I have I have the uh, M21 Muncie slipped on there just to kind of give you an idea. It was easier to grab, so just kind of test fit. The input shaft is the same as the T10 I have. All right, the Muncie's not bolted onto the bell housing, so that's why it's not aligned in the crank there. But what we're looking at here is the crank of the LS engines is slightly shorter than a small block Chevy crank with these transmissions were designed to work on. It does, when the transmission's bolted on there, it does go into the crank probably about halfway that it's supposed to. Um, what you need to get is that new throw-up bearing and basically don't install it into the crank as far as it will go. Leave a little bit sticking out so that it picks up your entire input shaft. And that should work. Here's the uh, pilot bearing for the LS2. I got it at Shucks for $22. Actually, now it's O'Reilly Auto Parts up here. Um, anyways, it's just a like regular bearing. I looked it up for a 2006 Pontiac GTO with a 6 liter because I know that has the LS2. Anyways, I you know, I just showed you there how the transmission fits into that crank, and I'm going to try to install the pilot bearing in there and see how it works. Well, now we've got the uh, pilot bearing installed in there. Um, you can see I left a little bit sticking out. It's really, it's a real snug fit. It's not ever going to come out of there like that. All right, now you can see I've got the uh, pilot bearing all installed in there. Then we've got the clutch disc here and the clutch aligning tool. This is the old school clutch disc here. You can tell it fits right onto that flywheel. Just fine. We're going to go ahead and bolt on the pressure plate now. 
Okay, now we've got the pressure plate just kind of test fitted on here. I just put in two bolts to kind of hold it in place. See, I've got the clutch just inside with the alignment tool in there and everything. And everything's pretty, basically just lining up perfectly. This old pressure plate bolts right on. It's the exact same bolt pattern. See right in there? Holes line up perfect. Now, um, what I have heard on the internet, the other people doing this swap, that's how I found all this information, that there is some dowel panels, pins in this flywheel. This is actually a uh, brand new resurfaced flywheel, so um, the, I asked the guy at the clutch shop to knock out the dowel pins for me. I didn't even have to do anything. So, uh, but he was able to hook me up with this flywheel. Alaska well, Clutch Rebuilder is a great place to go. You need a clutch in here in Alaska. Well, pressure plate is installed. Pulled out the clutch alignment tool. Everything seems to have gone well. Got the bolts torqued to 35 foot pounds. It says it right on the back of the uh, pressure plate to torque to 35 foot pounds and do it in a cross pattern. So make sure to do that. It's got good grade 8 bolts. Well, now the bell housing is all secured on there, bolted. Well, as I said, I was going to get the uh, transmission fitted. Well, here's the test fit. It, it fits perfect. All right, well, here's the uh, final fit here. I've got transmission. I repainted it with some engine enamel paint. It's a nice cast iron color, kind of like the bell housing. Here's the motor, 5.3 liter, LS1 intake on there. Looks pretty good. Yeah, I gotta get, gotta get a new oil pan for it to make it work in my 55. Or actually, I have it on order. It's the muscle GM muscle car oil pan. It says if it's 1955 to 19. Uh, shoot, I forget. 90, 9, 1995, I think, is all the way up there. Yeah.